Welcome to the Christian Coach Podcast, where our mission is to serve coaches through conversations so they can lead like Jesus. I'm Gian Lemmy, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Chad Simpson and Jim Good. Hey, guys. Hey, Gian. What's up, Gian? Not much, not much. Just still recovering from my uh, marathon that I ran a few weeks ago. I um, think I still have some lingering effects from that. But um, my... You're my Crazy. hero, sir. You are my hero. <laughs> I'm going to do another gin. When's the next maybe one? Maybe in the future. I, I really, I saw a bunch of older men like running with their daughters. I thought that was really cool. You know, like doing something with the kids, um, in, introducing them to that kind of lifestyle too. Um, I thought that was, that was neat. So maybe when, maybe when Olivia turns seven, I'll take her to a marathon and she can run with me. I like that kidding. idea. Maybe in 20 years, I'll be in the wheelchair. And my daughter will be pushing me through the marathon. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but it's it's April and uh, just so excited for a new month. And we had an extra basketball episode last week just because of March Madness and the final and everything. But now for the month of April, we're going to have a roundtable discussion today, as well as two more interviews um, with time management, productivity experts. Um, and they actually now ended up working for the same company. Uh, we won't spoil uh, the guests. So you're going to have to come back next week and the following week to find out. But we just uh, wanted to focus April as a time management, productivity kind of rhythms theme, um, because a lot of seasons are now finishing up, right? Summer is about to, to start. And we want to to share a little bit of our wisdom, a little bit of our mistakes that we've made in the past in regards to all of those things. Um, so we just want to introduce that to, to the audience as well as just ask you guys, what's one thing you do every day that sets you up for success? Well, I know for me, one thing that I started incorporating was uh, my 5 a.m. wake up. I started this about five years ago and I'll be honest with transitioning out of my job. It, it could be 515. It could be 530. So don't hold me on that 5 a.m. wake up call. But uh, I start off with the three mile like prayer walk and just uh, music. And I if I don't do that for my morning, I, I'm setting myself up for just a, a lousy day. So I know just that initial wake up getting rolling with my prayer walk has really uh, changed my life. Yeah. Chad, Jim, you have I just, I'm just going to dig deeper for Jim for a second. Jim, just for our, our friends listening, can you counsel them on, all right, I'm, I've been sleeping in too much. How do I go from 7.30 to 5 a.m.? Like, uh, what are some, how do you get up that early, man? Baby steps, baby steps. Um, you know, if you're if you're used to sleeping in the 8, 8.30, that's a drastic move to go right to 5. Now, for me, uh, I was able to do that. And I think there's some of us that can, but I would say to you, gradually push it back, you know, hey, 15 minutes earlier today, 20 minutes earlier today, and maybe reward yourself on the weekend and say, hey, Saturday, I'm not going to do it. Um, but I would encourage you to do that. And one thing that really helps me, and I, I think a lot of successful leaders do this is don't hit snooze. Um, that alarm goes off, get up, you control the day, don't let that alarm clock control you. So those, those are some things I've learned. That's yeah, good, I, I really liked um, that point, Jim, because I am a 430 guy, um, mm -hmm. which I was not that. Before kids, I was like an 8 a.m., 9 a.m. guy, stayed up late. My wife was a nurse, so she would come home at 11 o'clock at night. Then we would have our time together, and then we would go to sleep. Um, but ever since kids, they trained me to wake up early because they mm -hmm. wake up so early that I still needed time for myself. But one of the things I learned was like, if you leave something fun to do in the morning, something that you actually like to do in the morning, then it makes you want to wake up, you know? So it could be your cup of coffee. It could be reading your Bible. It could be, hey, I'm going to watch this, my favorite TV show in the, if I, when I wake up this early or whatever, whatever that is that gives you life in that season of, of your life, then, um, I think that helps as well. But if you're if you're waking up early at 4:30 to go run and you hate running, no wonder you're <laughs> never going to wake up at 4:30, you know? So, I think it's it's a good tip to always leave something fun for the morning because then you're looking forward to it. Now I set my coffee maker to start brewing 
at 4 30 in case i get a little lazy and i don't want to wake up i smell it and i'm like oh i need to i need to drink that coffee now while it's hot so um so that's my fun thing that i leave up in the morning and then i do my quiet time while drinking that coffee and then take the dog on a walk so that's that's how i've been doing my mornings to set me up for success nice yeah on, on the subject of of morning routines i got a habit tracker if anybody's oh i'm too blurry on the video yeah, there oh, um, and the, yeah. but that's been something something fun for me as i i just said what if i can do 300 times to get 5 45 a.m to mm -hmm. wake up have the time with the lord have the workout and so that was my my goal for the year and the, the habit tracker has been uh, fun just kind of having some metrics and um and yeah evaluating am i am i pursuing and achieving this goal that i set out there january one um but yeah the morning routine that's every you hear every ceo every leader that's super important to win win the day at the start yeah yeah there's a common theme with uh the successful leader uh whether it's a coach businessman ceo dad, mom, whatever occupation or role of that uh, morning routine. And I would say this is you're maybe establishing a new morning routine. Uh, don't beat yourself up if you miss a day or two. Um, I think it's we 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 need to give a little bit of grace as we, you know, open up because a lot of times we'll beat ourselves up and then just quit. You know, hey, yeah. start it back up again. I think just giving ourselves a little bit of grace as we you know, establish that routine is important. Yeah, I I agree with that, Jim. I think it's true. I think the same way that if you build several days in a row and then you feel more likely to to continue to do that habit, if you don't do something several, you know, one or two days is not going to break you. But once you go like a week, a week and a half without doing something, it's much harder, right? And I, I equate that I'm trying to teach my kids how to bike. Now, my five-year-old, I'm trying to teach her without uh, you know, training wheels, my three-year-old, I'm just trying to make sure he doesn't kill himself on a bike. <laughs> so, um, but I equate that to, it's really hard for you to take that first pedal, right? When you're putting, when the first foot down to start the bike moving, but once you get that momentum going, it's so easy to just keep going pedal after pedal, pedal after pedal. But that first motion is really hard. And then sometimes we have to stop at a crosswalk to let the cars go and then to go back again and start, it's it's really hard. That first battle is hard to get started. Um, so I always equate the the habits to like biking. Mm. Yeah, for, for sure, Gian. And um, I'm 34. And to think back, when I was 22, I did not realize how important these habits were. Mm. Think about every day you wake up. Are we winning that battle? Every day you're eating meals three times a day, at least, you know, like, um, you're going to sleep. These things that you do every single day, they are so, so clutch. And uh, you start to see these patterns and uh, forming who you are and who you're growing into be. So I, I wish I could kick back at the beginning and start winning some of these these daily habits then. Um, but never, never too late, I guess, here in our yeah. 30s, start getting it going. Yeah, I remember hearing someone sharing with me a few years ago, to be a better coach, you need to be a better for you. And so as you're developing these morning routines and habits in your life, you know, as a coach, it's sometimes easy to just focus on our profession and try to get better in that area. Um, but are we taking the time to get better as an individual, better as, as the Bible says, you know, this is, this is our temple. This is as a believer, God's temple. And I know for me, when I kind of went through my nutrition change and exercise, that I went, I went hardcore for a while, just kind of eating clean Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But I'll tell you what I did when I first started out was I had cheat day and Friday for me was cheat day. And it just kept me sane, I think. And it helped and it was something to look forward to. And, and so I, I just say that as an encouragement, uh, as you kind of maybe get into some new habits, new things like that. It, it's okay. Every now and then I say cheat day in my eating, uh, but I remember, you know, doing my broccoli and carrots and grilled chicken. But Friday, I'm calling my brother, large pepperoni pizza, root beer. Let's go. <laughs> I'm treating. And my brother was always willing and eager to go with me. But then it was back on Saturday. Here we go. Back to it. So uh, just just kind of a thought. Yeah. yeah. Now, shifting to another area of our of our of our lives as coaches and leaders in general is how do we prioritize what needs to get done first? 
right? Mm -hmm. I think we have so many things. And, and I think I went from, I'm always, always a list guy, right? So if I have a list, I can check things off and I love checking things off. But then it's a matter of how do you go about figuring out on that list what's, what's the most important thing that moves you forward, right? And so what, what are some of the things that you guys do on a regular basis to figure out, okay, I need to get this done first. And it could be also with family stuff, right? So like I wake up at 4.30 in the morning because I know that my kids are going to be up at 5.15. And so I need those 45 minutes for myself so that then I can go check off their needs, right? The things that are on their lists, right? It's a crackers. Give me crackers Eddie, while I watch Bluey or, you know, I need breakfast, make me some eggs or whatever, you know? But if sometimes I wake up early and, or I wake up later than usual and I'm just, and it's go, go, go. I have no time for myself. I feel a little bit more frustrated. Um, and I sometimes take it off on them and that's just not a good experience. So uh, how do you guys prioritize? Yeah, I feel, I feel for me, um, just talk about the big three. It helps me. Um, just, uh, Michael Hyatt is a guy that you guys can, can look up and read some of his stuff, but he, he has a fully focused planner that really helps. So each week I'll have my big three. So what's, what's the most important big three tasks I need to get done. So for you coach, maybe I, I have to get 20 messages sent out in recruiting. Okay. Big. That's my big rock. I'm going to get this done. Um, and then just each day waking up and all right, one, two, three, these are my three big things. And I'm not going to leave the office till I get, get these three done. And so, um, you know, we, we talked about like the urgent, um, co coming up or the, the emergencies coming in. So I feel those just uh, have to have to get done. But that's that's one thing for me. What about you, Jim? Well, two things come to my mind, uh, being organized and being intentional. Um, I'll go back to about seventh grade. I fell in love with the trapper keeper and, and kids uh, in my class would make fun of me. But I was I was detailed. I was organized as a 12 year old. And I can see, see how that planted the seed into my adult life. But just being organized with my subjects and where I was at. And so when I lean into now being intentional, um, it's important to, you know, plan your work and then work your plan. And I remember hearing a colleague sharing that with me and the role that we're in right now, um, I have to I have to think annually, well, what am I what am I trying to do? And then I'll break that down into kind of, um, you know, quarterly. Then I'll break that down into monthly and then I break that down into weekly and then I break that down into daily. And I think that's what every good coach does. Every good teacher does is being organized, being intentional. And then I remember reading and I don't remember the book. You guys might be able to help me out. Um, Eat the frog. Yeah. And it's talking about doing the hard things first. That way you just kind of knock the hard things out, get rid of the difficult. And then the rest of the day kind of just smooths. And I'm working on that. I don't always do the hard thing first. I like to kind of, for me, like to warm up a little bit, cross off a couple of things. Gian mentioned being a detailed and list guy. I'm the guy that if it's not on my list and I do something, this is how sick I am, people. I would put it on my list so I can cross it off. Gian's shaking his head. He's with me. If you're out there, coach, we are a sick breed of people right here. But just that idea of crossing things off my list. But I'm learning to, you know, be organized, be intentional, do the hard things. And, and then you got to look at your timing. There, there are some things that I'll jump in on and it doesn't have to be done for a few weeks but then I have something a little more urgent coming up. So that goes back into just, you know, being organized, being intentional. Yeah. And I think sometimes you have, you can have multiple strategies. You could just do the hardest thing first while you're most focused or regardless. I think uh, Carrie Newhoff has a book about at your best with your energy zones. Right. But I like to get a few easy wins early in the morning. Right. Right at 430. I want to check a few things off of my to-do list um, because right around 6.30 is when I'm fully awake and fully energized. And that's from 6.30 to 11. That's when I crush my most important things, the hardest things right there. Mm -hmm. Some people need to take a cold shower in the right when they first wake up, because then if they can withstand a cold shower early in the morning, they can withstand anything. 
that kind of the mentality, you know, just do one hard things first and then it sets the tone for the rest of the day. I'm a little bit more of a wimp in that way. I like just a hot <laughs> coffee when I wake up. Um, but um, I think that it, it's whatever works for you, but you have to have some type of routine. I think that's the point we're trying to make that you have to have some type of routine because you have to make so many choices during the day, right? And some things as a leader, it just gets thrown at you and you just have to react. Sometimes it feels good to just know what's coming next for a few hours of the day. I think, Gian, as you talk about rhythms and routines as well, I think even within the week, when I was a head coach at a small college um, with not a whole lot of support and help doing everything by myself, it really helped me to just focus. Mondays was like logistic day. So I had to like, do we have the van? Do we have the hotels? Like, are we going to be able to get all, all of this stuff, our balls purchased on um, Tuesday? My, you know, the big rock for college recruiting is recruit with college is recruiting. So Tuesdays, that was my recruiting day. So I was just crushing it as much as I could on the recruiting. Um, by the end of the week, I feel like my space and my mind and my heart were a little more freed up. So by Thursday, Friday, that turned into more of my mentoring, my discipleship, my relationship mm -hmm. side and, and coaching at a small Christian college. So I do think it's important to think through uh, if possible, you know, and that's that's our morning because afternoons we're at practice. But that three hour gap, how can I win this? How can I be focused? That's good, Chad. I liked hearing that. And in my mind, it was almost like it's that trapper keeper. And, and when I say trapper keeper, if our young coaches don't know what a trapper keeper is, please look it up. Okay. It's just, I don't know. Story. I don't know what a trapper keeper is. You don't <laughs> please, please. Okay. So Maybe just, we just can blame, we can blame on my, and, on my foreignness, not on yeah. my age. There you go. There you go. So the, the three ring binders, you know, the, the tabs and the, these were things that as a 12 year old, I just lived for. You know, uh, I'd have my orange highlighter, my my neon green, my blue, my red pen, my pencil. I like just that organization. I can see how, honestly, I'm going to pivot here a little bit as I'm even talking about that. It's it's important, though, to leave some flexibility in there because I've learned that as I got older into my coaching as a parent of my twenties to my forties, I would detail everything out for practice. You know, three to three Oh five was the ball handling and the dribbling three ten to three twenty was the defense and, and the conditioning. And then as I got older, I just kind of, I, I still was detailed, but I left more room for windows, opportunities, teachable moments. Um, I'll throw in ideas, people coming in the gym and I, I'd have that, less pressure on myself that, oh, 405, we were supposed to be in our half court zone offense, but okay, 405, I pivot, I made a change. So there's that idea of just, just maybe having some flexibility within your routine and schedule that I think is important too. Yeah, and, and Jim, as I'm hearing you, I'm just thinking about the word margin. I've heard people talk about like an 85% margin, like you're scheduling out this, but we realize 15%, there's going to be things that come up and remembering that people, people are the project, you know, um, like we, I feel like a lot of coaches, if you're like me, you're a doer, you're an achiever. Um, and like, we're going to get the stuff done, but then we might neglect the person that that's right across from us at the table or in the van. So I think remembering that too, in the middle of productivity, that we could be the most productive, efficient coach in the world, but not be a loving, caring coach too. So I think it is key to balance them both. I think as you say to that, Chad, I I think back in, in my earlier, th those are the moments that I probably missed. I missed out on coaching how Jesus would have coached because I was so focused on my agenda, my schedule, and this is what we're supposed to be at. And I, I let frustration where maybe I missed out on a teachable moment. Maybe I missed out on a hug to my player because I, I'm I'm moving on. And so I, man, that, that convicts yeah. me right there. Yeah, that really brings to if, when you talked about, you know, coaching like Jesus, it takes me back to when the the father came to Jesus and said, hey, my daughter is about to die. And, you know, she's 12 years old and she's about to die. And Jesus goes with him. Right. But then mm -hmm. the woman who was struggling with bleeding uh, for 12 years also, which is no accident, touches him in the middle of the crowd and he stops. Right. Instead of he was on a mission, like he was going to help these, you know, and, and he yeah, said, no, good. this person here who just touched me, who also needs me, um, 
I'm going to take the time, right? So much so he took so much time that the, the girl that he was originally going to go save actually died. And obviously he did that on purpose so that he could show um, the power that God threw him. Um, but I think sometimes we just, we're just so focused on, we need to get mm -hmm. this done. We need to, and I'm so guilty of this, right? That yeah. sometimes our kids are asking for, for attention and we're just like, no, I'm, this is my, this is what I do now at, at two 30. This is what I do. I don't, I don't do family at two 30 at five o'clock. Yeah. I do family, but at two 30, I don't do family. Um, mm. but I think we need, we need to have some structure because that also gives us the freedom to be a little flexible. It reminds me, John Maxwell says, you know, walk through the crowd slowly and just walk in slowly. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Gene, I think the realizing that the interruptions, you know, like those, those are usually the divine appointments. So I think that's a really good point, man. And, um, just as I'm looking about at Eugene and your role, I'm thinking about delegation too now, because I think that's another part that we only have so many hours in the day for me at a smaller college, having a lot to do, uh, compared to a division one school, you know, you're able to maybe get, get help in certain areas, but you guys have any, any thoughts or experiences with some key, uh, delegation, uh, to help with time management? Yeah. Um, I put my players in charge of going to find out the restaurants in a certain town that we were going to visit. Right. It gives them a little bit of, you know, you know, experience getting that done as well as some authority on, Oh, he's tr trusting me to pick where we're going to eat. And we always end up eating in the same place that would have picked, you know, because when you're going to Bowie Creek, North Carolina, nothing against Campbell University, but if you're going to Bowie Creek, North Carolina, there's not that many options for you to eat there. <laughs> so then you're going to end up going to the same place that I wouldn't going to choose, but because they chose it, it feels like it's their choice and they're taking some authority and they're taking some ownership. I think that's one way. I think you can Im involve the athletes a little bit more in those types of decision-making uh, opportunities where then you don't have to, to spend the time doing those things. That's good. I, I used to brag. I don't know if you guys were like this. I would brag on my own multitasking. Oh yeah. Like, like as an athletic director, a coach and a, you know, a, a Christian high school, you, you got to wear a lot of hats. And I was talking off air with G and what his role was at, you know, the school that he coached at, and it's just different at the high school level. So coaches that are there, I, I would brag on this idea. Look what I could do. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm multitasking. And before you know it, you're just not very good at what God's called you to do. And there's times where you have to navigate and balance and juggle all that. But as I got older, just, just like what you said, Gian, using your athletes to give some responsibility. And even for me, a, a practice for a coach, practice was like my time. I love practice. The games were for the kids. I learned that practice was the coach. And I would be so detailed and structured and I would lead this drill and I would lead that. And then just giving that responsibility to some of the seniors, some of the captains and talking to them, Hey, I want you to think of two drills to lead at the beginning. And I remember the first time I did it, their eyes lit up like, wow, I get to lead this drill. And those were some of our best drills because the kids were doing it giving my assistant a little bit more freedom in calling an inbound play or coach, when we switch defenses, what do you think we should go to? And I think that's the true power of leadership, you know, not just creating followers, but ultimately creating other leaders. Yeah. And, and it's like, what does God want most of us? He wants trust. You know, he wants us to have faith. And I think uh, a leader that, that can delegate, uh, has to be secure and we have to be able to yeah. trust others. And so I think it's a, a good practice in just relinquishing some of the control and seeing if they could rise up and maybe do it better than what, what we could do. Um, so yeah, Gene, what you got? Uh, no, I, I, I loved it. I need to, I need to take off now and try to find out what a trapper's keeper is. Is that what it was? <laughs> a trapper's keeper. If that's the only thing you're getting out of this podcast, Gene, <laughs> I, I'm going to pray for you, sir. <laughs> no, I just, uh, I just, I think we, this, this time around, I think we wanted to finish, uh, in prayer. Chad, would you mind, uh, leading us in prayer and giving, uh, asking for guidance for our, our coaches, our leaders who are listening, our parents, um, and all the roles that they have to wear, uh, they have to be at. And so, um, would you mind doing that? For sure. Let's, right. let's bow and pray. Heavenly father, we, we love you, God. Uh, we worship you. Your name is high and lifted up. It's, uh, the undefeated, Undisputed champion, uh, 
your your triumph and, and your victory. And uh, thanks for every coach tuning in here, joining us on this journey. Uh, help us to all just coach and lead like you. Uh, pray that your word would speak, that your spirit would guide. And uh, just pray, Lord, that we could just enter the sports arena uh, with with your spirit, that we could be the light right where you've placed us. Um, bless all these listeners. Give them strength to uh, to carry on. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Coach, remember, the mission field is right where you're at. Welcome to the Christian Coach Podcast, where our mission is to serve coaches through conversations so they can lead like Jesus. I'm Gian Lemmy, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jim Good and Chad Simpson. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Gian. Hey, everybody. Um, first episode of April with an interview. Um, our guest is Mandy Green. She is the CEO of Busy Coach. And Mandy used to be a college soccer coach um, before she just took this right turn straight into becoming an entrepreneur and starting her own business. And now she also serves alongside Dan Tudor, who we've had on the podcast, and it's helping coaches figure out their recruiting, but as well as figuring out their stressful lives, their their busy lives, therefore the name Busy Coach. But she's done some great work, even just her free stuff that she offers, just like Dan Tudor. It can really be career changing in a way. Yeah, and this this episode I, it was awesome. I loved it. It was uh, super helpful, uh, different different style than than some of the others. But coach, we, we just really wanted to serve you and um and just being excellent in your craft. And so we thought bringing bringing Mandy in is is really going to help you uh, manage your schedule because um we know just it's hard as a coach. And so that's why we wanted to dedicate this this month and these interviews into just, uh, yeah, not, not being the busy coach, but, you know, being the, being the spirit filled coach and, and going the right pace through things. And even just thinking about the the word Ephesians five says, look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time. And so we really want to just uh, feed, feed you with, with some of this uh, good stuff from coach Mandy Green. Yeah, we appreciate Mandy sharing some of her insight. Great interview and um, discussion. Gian did a great job. You could tell she she got passionate. She got excited towards the end when she did start sharing some principles about time management. And I saw and felt the emotion in her and the lessons that she learned. And I, I love how she related the example. As coaches, we plan our practice. I, I was that guy who had it detailed practice plan. I think that's important. But then how many of us as leaders, as coaches don't necessarily plan our day. So I, I love that analogy. And then also I encourage you to tune in as she used the term creating versus consuming. So just lock in on those two terms there. Yeah. I love those, those teasers, Jim. And we just can't wait to get to the podcast interview with Mandy Green right now. Amen. Great job, G, and great job, Mandy. Again, thanks for sharing and being with us, coaches. I, I love how Mandy, just uh, in her intro, shared about being involved in four sports. I don't know if you caught that, but she played four different sports. And I know in today's uh, world, there's a lot of uh, limited action and specialization, but I'm sure a ton of lessons that she learned growing up. And you can just see how that even relates to what she's doing now with her time management. But again, just a great interview, great podcast. Enjoyed her sharing uh, that insight, especially with the time management and planning your day. Yeah, this was this was excellent. And uh, I wish... I have some regrets, you know, it's like, man, I wish I could go back when I started my coaching career uh, to implement some of these strategies because, uh, man, I had my head over water trying to do it all, trying to grow the program. And so it's super important to um, to, yeah, be be organized and and learn some of these uh, things that Mandy's teaching. We encourage you guys go go follow her on social media. She does a great job uh, on Twitter and, and Instagram. Um, and then just as a parent too, just the consuming versus creating, I thought that was a great little nugget that I'm going to take away for my kids is like, no, you're not just going to go and watch, watch Bluey or, or whatever. Like you need to go and, and create something. Um, and then, yeah, go share it with the world. Yeah. And like I said, in the intro, she's had so many great resources. I even purchased from her, her social media calendar. 
And coach, if you're really trying to get into the social media game for your program, it's such a great resource because she has 365 ideas already put out on a schedule for you to just plug and play. Like this, this Monday, maybe share a story about one of your seniors. Then Tuesday, share about your academic facilities. And Thursday, all of those things. And it's really, really helpful during the pandemic, that's what I started getting myself into, which now led me to working as a social media manager. Um, but it was such a great resource because it took the guessing out of out of the equation, right? I just didn't have to come up with ideas. I just need to execute those ideas and I could plan ahead and get ahead of the game that way. But Mandy was so, so thoughtful, so kind to take some time, you know, time of, out of her busy schedule. Sorry, the pun there, Mandy. But um, just... Just so thankful for her and just want to remind everyone that the mission field is right where you're at.